Hello, welcome to Management Access and Use of Big and Complex Data. I am Beth Plaley. I'm a professor in the School of Informatics and Computing at Indiana University, and this is a course that's being taught as part of the Data Science Program. Why should you care about a course in Management Access and Use of Big and Complex Data? I mean, there are a number of reasons. Data. As, as we've all heard listening to the popular press and, and, and doing the reading that we're doing, know that that data is abundant, data sources are growing, uh, you know, from social media to environmental sensors to, to you know, digitized content from museums, from, from libraries. Uh, we are seeing a, an explosion in, of data from, you know, certainly in the, in the business setting, from aggregating sources of, da of, of data from, from multiple external sources and internal sources. You know, so, so you, know, why, you know, why do we need to focus on the management access and use of that data? Well, you know, data can be difficult to use, um, and it can be particularly difficult to reuse. So data that's collected for one purpose can be particularly difficult in another setting. Additionally, data can suffer several issues that, that this course uh, looks at. Uh, a storage system could be a database, could be a file system, can't handle the size of the data, then what? Uh, then you look beyond that. Um, a, a particular data set can lack sufficient metadata in order to be able to use it, so it's inadequately contextualized. What happens then? Data can be noisy. You know, this is where data cleaning has to, become, has to come in, um, and cleaning has to be done in a way that it's not the, uh, so that the content is not um, uh, made less meaningful by that cleaning process. Um, data may or may not be trusted. But you know, if something has been corrupted along the way, if, if a, a data object has been corrupted along the way from moving from one person to into another, its trust is called into question. The storage system it resides on uh, may or may not be trusted. I mean, these are all issues of our day and all issues to the effective use and reuse of the abundance of data that's available to us. You may want to know a little bit more about me. I've got a PhD in computer science. Partway through my career, I shifted from a stronger emphasis on distributed systems and operating systems into more of a data orientation, particularly a big data orientation around the representation of data, infrastructure, cyber infrastructure for data, some of this which we'll see you know, throughout the course. Um, I have an MBA uh, and seven years experience in the software industry, which I think uh, brings to bear on the, on the kinds of discussions that we have and the kind of topics that we'll look at. I think this happens to be particularly relevant for, for many of you who will go on to uh, positions in industry. As I had mentioned before, I'm a full professor in, in the School of Informatics Computing at Indiana University, and I direct a center there called the Data to Insight Center. Wanted to give you an example of something that I'm working on now that, that we'll use as a case study uh, for our course. And this is uh, the Hathi Trust Research Center. You know, it's motivated by a question, and a question you know, put some thought into as, as we talk through this, because you'll see this again. So how do you design a system that allows text mining over 4.6 billion pages of both images and OCR, which is optical character read text, that occur in 14 million books from university libraries. This is the challenge that the Hathi Trust Research Center is taking on. Uh, it, is a, it is a problem of scale in, in many, many ways, particularly when you think about walking through a million books, and there's 14 million here, walking through a million books from a computer's perspective takes a thousand computers one day. So to walk through, when I say walk through, it's like in a linear way, chugging through each page. To chug through all 14 million books will take a thousand computers 14 days to do. So that gives you an idea of scale. The, 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 the issues of scale are large here. This is complicated by the fact that 70% of those books are copyrighted. So the computation has to occur close to the data or in a way that does not allow the content to leave whatever trusted environment it's in. So those two, those two, the scale and the security questions, 
make this a, a big data problem that that's that's quite interesting. Again, we will use this as a case study. Um, I happen to be the director of this, this the a founding director actually of the Hadi Trust Research Center. Let's look at what the semester looks like. You can see that the course is organized into 20 lessons. You can see that down the left-hand side of this table. And if you look over to the right-hand side of the table, you can see that there's a distribution of these lessons over the 16 weeks. So week three has two lessons, lessons three and four. Those are, are considered to be you know, accomplishable within a single week. So the proximate week gives you a schedule, a timeline uh, through this online course. Each lesson has a, a topic or a title. Lesson number one is big data and business. Lesson number two is big data and scientific research. And you can see in lessons three and four, we handle data processing pipelines, both in science and in business. And that's to, to give a, a broader view of, uh, actually a broader view and also a sense that these topics do occur, not only in science, but in business, and not only in business, but in science. We go on and talk about data cleansing, data coding. Uh, we have a number of kind of systems oriented uh, lessons, and you can see in the area, we go from intro to data pipelines, software systems, we've got a project stuck in there, distributed systems, distributed data store, data provenance, linked data, open source, open data, and data sharing. So there is a focus around distributed systems and, and software systems, and this, this, this does form a core um, of this course, and also I think a, a necessary piece to a data science program. The course is a three credit hour course and it covers a semester of work. Now, since now online courses can be handled different ways, are they, you know, is it, is it, is it completely independent in terms of the, your progression through the course? Well, if this was not a graded semester long course, then yes, I mean, you could take your time through the course and finish it in a year or two years if you wanted to, but that is not the way this particular course is structured. The course is structured for credit. There is a, a grade that gets assigned at the end of the semester. And, and there's another aspect that, that is worth pointing out. Peer review, I think, is very, very important. It's not only important to get feedback from myself and from Zong, who is the, the AI of the course, you also need feedback from each other. And I think that feedback can be extremely valuable, particularly with this course, since we're drawing in people from, from you know, very diverse backgrounds. So that can be extremely valuable. So we are using peer review as a way of giving feedback. However, peer review has built into it an assumption that, that everybody comes in with something to peer review. So there, you are expected to follow the schedule of progress that, that was given in the table in the previous slide. The expectation is of any three hour course that you're putting in six to seven hours a week, every week, and this includes time spent in the readings, the exercise, and engaging with instructional content. And I'll give you a little bit of an idea of, of what that engaging instructional content means in, in a, a following slide. So how do you engage with us? When I say us, I mean myself and our AI, Zong Peng. This will tell you. First of all, though, we're broken out into three sections, and those sections are, 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 are going to be dealt with separately. Uh, there's the off-campus graduate students, and this is section 34881. There's the residential graduate students, and that's section 34879, so you know where you are. And there's the undergraduates, and that's section 34880. Okay, so for the off-campus graduate students, we're going to be doing an online hangout discussion, and that's going to be every Friday from 5 to 6 p.m. And then there's going to be Canvas for our daily interactions. The residential graduate students will have an in-person discussion every Friday, and this will go from 1 o'clock to 2.15 p.m. And you will use Canvas for daily interactions. The undergraduates, you undergraduates, We'll have an online hangout discussion every Friday, and this will go on from 11 to 12.15. And you will have office hours that you will be able to use two hours a week. We'll get back to you on when that will occur. 
we'll set up something that that is that is workable um, and you will use canvas for daily interactions the competence excuse me competency in the course is going to be evaluated on your engagement with and mastery of the content and this is through several forms your engagement with the online content and keep in mind like a lot of these online systems office mix which is what we're using uh, for a course development here does provide analytics so it does give us you know you log in to access the um, the lesson and it, it it is recording your engagement with the the content uh, your engagement with the video the amount of time you spend and then any uh, office mix allows you to embed quizzes for feedback and, and those how you you know your your uh, response to those will be re as part of the uh, recorded as part of the analytics so it's the engagement with the online content uh, your engagement in projects in exercises or what we sometimes call reflections reflections and exercises are slightly different but each lesson has a reflection or an exercise to have you reflect back on on what you've learned in that lesson uh, your engagement in our canvas interactions this is where discussions go on and then you know through canvas and then also your engagement in the discussion sessions so overall these five aspects will be that upon which uh, your competency your competency in the course is assessed so let's go ahead and get started i tell you what where you can start on the web page there's a syllabus draw that syllabus down and take take a good look at it it is it is very very extensive there are readings on there there are pointers to the lessons uh, the reflections are going to be in Canvas. I would I would start by looking at those readings, uh, you know, diving into the lessons, um, and you know, heck, let, let's get started. Good luck.